Welcome to CCFR's Canada Downrange. Sport shooting is the most exciting and least covered sport in Canada. Come with us as we travel across our great nation to discover the coolest events, amazing locations, and the most interesting people. I'm Rod Giltaka, CEO and Executive Director for the Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights, and I want to tell you that you've become part of history. The CCFR's Canada Downrange is the first show in Canadian broadcast history to focus entirely on sports shooting and target shooting. It's never happened before. Target shooting is primarily done with handguns and black rifles. Hundreds of thousands of hardworking, responsible Canadians own and use these types of firearms, and it's about time that they get the recognition and the respect that they deserve. Now, it's important that you understand the, the purpose of the show. We traveled across Canada and discovered an endless variety of sports that virtually anyone can participate in. We also met hundreds of welcoming organizers and participants who want to get the word out about their sports. So, the show is a great way for Canadians to see what's out there and how to join. The contact information associated with each sport will be provided at the end of each show. So the show is designed to grow the shooting sports, to get more people involved. I've been a part of producing this show, which is a, a first for me, um, and I was absolutely shocked, to be honest, at the sheer volume of different sports and opportunities there are for people that own a firearm in Canada. Thanks to our sponsors for taking a chance on this production, we really appreciate it, and also to all the people who agreed to share a little bit about themselves to make it all interesting. I hope you'll enjoy the show as much as we enjoyed making it. Thanks for watching. Today on CCFR's Canada Downrange, we're going to check out an exciting three-gun exercise at Chilliwack Fish and Game Protective Association in British Columbia. We'll also head to Exile Reloaded Gun Range in Lloydminster, Alberta. Chilliwack Fish and Game Protective Association is our first location today, where the DSSBCA is hosting a case qualifier. So the Dynamic Sport Shooting BC Association, it's an organization that we started about three years ago. Uh, we wanted to have a group that multiple ranges could work together. We needed to establish some sort of uh, basic standard for safety. involves going from standing to kneeling to sitting to prone, shooting around obstacles, those sorts of things. So it's, it's definitely a little more challenging than, than sitting at a bench. So we established the criteria, we call it the competency and safety exam, or CASE for short. It's a little one day program, it's not terribly expensive, it is a pass or fail course. But we get people out there and, and we're able to demonstrate that they can competently handle their firearm while, while participating in this sort of a uh, sporting environment. The Dynamic Shooting Sports British Columbia Association is a society founded in 2015 with the following purpose. The association exists to promote safe and responsible participation in dynamic shooting sports. The case qualifier consists of a handgun, AR-15 or equivalent, and shotgun target shooting, depending on the specific event. This is a way to assess participants' competency and safety with a firearm in a dynamic shooting event. At each of the events, different stages have been created to showcase a progressively difficult course with shots coming from many different positions. This is a friendly competition where everyone is deemed a winner, and the motto here is, enter as strangers, leave as friends. Yeah, it's, it's a real diversity. We've got everything from uh, construction folk to doctors, lawyers, dentists, uh, a lot of teachers. Um, some people have a former background with the military, you know, they were either in the army or reserves at some point, but most people don't. 
they just they just enjoy uh, having fun with their firearms and doing so in a dynamic way. And so it's it's people from all walks of life. You know, it's not an inexpensive sport, <laughs> so you don't see people involved who uh, who are scraping by. You know, there is definitely some cost involved, but, but one of the main principles for DSS is to keep it as, as low barrier as possible. We've got people all the way from 19 up to 79 or older. You know, it is competitive, but, but there's not a focus, absolute focus on the competition. It's more about uh, having fun and being safe. While the entrants are very competitive, Getting trigger time for ordinary people is the main goal here, and it certainly surpassed expectations. In the end, this was an amazing event put on by a world-class organization and was enjoyed by a diverse crowd of passionate gun enthusiasts. The participants at this event come from all walks of life, including physicians, dentists, and accountants. By the end of the day, the camaraderie was fully evident and everyone left feeling like a part of a team. There is a marked increase in the number of young people involved, and a lot of them are coming from exactly that. They, they grew up playing video games. Um, you know, Call of Duty is just the one that, that I'm most familiar with, so that's the one that we tend to, tend to use. But, uh, but yeah, they've, they've, they've grown up that way. Some of them may have tried airsoft or paintball and then eventually end up coming into the, into the firearms world. And as soon as they find out about the sort of match that we run with DSS, they're very interested. Um, and they come out and they soon find that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult, it's complicated. There's definitely skill to being able to move around quickly and efficiently and safely and, uh, and getting your hits as fast as you can. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think it's a great way to, to have new people involved in the sport. Um, I have to say, based on my involvement that I have with the local Fish and Game Association, it's definitely the fastest growing part of the club um, or individuals involved with those uh, those sorts of firearms and involved in those kinds of activities and uh, I think it's a it's an opportunity that we need to embrace as a, as an organization as a community the firearms a tool like any other I mean it, it, sure it can be dangerous if it's if it's used uh, in an inappropriate way or, or not handled with uh, with with safety in mind so I think it's a good opportunity to get, get people out there, young people, involved and interested and, and you can teach them about how to, how to handle their firearms safely and, and how to do so in a, in a manner that they can enjoy themselves and have, have a lot of fun and be entirely safe doing it. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.
Hey everybody, I've got a tip for you. Today we're gonna to talk about storage of non-restricted firearms, let's say in your home. So you have four legal options. What's common throughout all of them are, is the fact that you cannot have a loaded firearm in your home. And the reason for that is, in Canada, you cannot load a firearm unless you're in an area where they can be legally and safely discharged. So you have four legal ways to store non-restricted firearms. Number one, which is you take your non-restricted firearm, you disassemble it. So in the regulation it says, remove the bolt or bolt carrier. But in the case of, let's say, a pump action shotgun, you're, you're really disassembling the whole firearm. So disassemble it, take all the pieces, throw it under your bed, just out of sight, not meant to be seen. Ammunition nowhere near the firearm. So if the ammunition is too close, if you haven't done your due diligence to get it as far away from that firearm as possible, you could face a charge of improper storage or unsafe storage, right? Which is a very serious criminal offense. So keep that ammunition a long way away, or better yet, lock it up somewhere. Now you've exceeded the law, so that's always good. Second legal way, not recommended either, because it's very easy for people to access that firearm and at least run away with it, is make sure it's unloaded, of course. Put a secure locking device, so a cable lock or a trigger lock on the firearm. Place the firearm under the bed, out of sight. So behind, under the bed or behind the washing machine or whatever it is you want to do, out of sight. Ammunition, nowhere near the firearm. So that's a legal way you can do that, but again, not really recommended because an unauthorized user could grab the firearm and take off with it. The next legal way, number three, is unloaded in a securely locked container. So today we're gonna to say gun case, so we'll just use that for example. So unloaded in a gun case, no secure locking device is required on the firearm if it's in the locked case. So no trigger lock, no cable required. Ammunition in the case is okay, all right? So unloaded in a case, no secure locking device required. Ammunition in the case is okay. And the fourth and best legal way is in a gun safe. So the reason why the gun safe is best is because gun safes can be quite heavy, right? So if you've got a gun safe and you bolt it to the floor or you bolt it to the wall, that's the best you can possibly do uh, as a you know, regular everyday law-abiding citizen to protect your guns against theft or unauthorized access, unauthorized users getting a hold of them. So unloaded, put your gun in the gun safe, no secure locking device required on the firearm if it's in the locked safe, ammunition in the safe is okay. So those are your four legal ways to store a non-restricted firearm. Now, all told, everything that I've told you right now, the laws in Canada seem to evolve all the time. There's always a bill floating around somewhere or a group of people looking to change things. So there has been some recent changes in the Firearms Act and the regulation. There's more contemplated changes coming. So everything I'm telling you is kind of a, um, just kind of an outline of what you can do legally, but don't rely on this information because it is subject to change. Always go to the Canadian Firearms Program website or call the Canadian Firearms Program at 1-800-731-4000 for the most recent information. It is your responsibility to make sure the information that you have and that you're going on is the most recent. So hopefully this helps. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. The second location we visited was Exile Reloaded Gun Range in Lloydminster, Alberta. The CCFR puts on ladies' events all across Canada, and Yolanda Buzain is the main instructor for today's event. I'm Yolanda. I am the Regional Field Office Coordinator for Nor uh, Northern Alberta and uh, we host ladies' days all over Alberta and Saskatchewan as well. So today we're hosting a ladies event here at Exile Reloaded. Uh, we have 88 ladies booked throughout the day. Some of them are brand new shooters, some are just shooters that want to come and hang out and try, you know, try new stuff. It's a good time to teach uh, the fundamentals, the basics, and it gets the women in an atmosphere where it's just them and they don't have to be, you know, worried or stressed in an uncomfortable atmosphere. So we, you know, we teach a basic, just grip, stance, sight picture, and then we give the ladies 50 rounds. They shoot 25, 22 rounds, 25 9 mil rounds.
So usually when women come in, I have a nice conversation. You kind of introduce yourself, get them used to the area. You can kind of gauge if they're if they're new or not. Some of the newer shooters, or you start off with a 22, and they're really comfortable, and then you transition to a 9 mil, and they kind of get intimidated and they don't want to push, and you never push the factor. We always want to make sure that they're comfortable and having fun. Yolanda is just one of CCFR's knowledgeable and passionate instructors here today. And they work hard to create a safe and comfortable atmosphere for the 88 ladies that are registered for this event. They will be teaching the basics about firearms etiquette as well as proper handling and firearm safety procedures. Sometimes the participants come with apprehension. So, how do you guys feel about your, this is your first time shooting? Uh, shooting handguns, yes. First time? Shooting guns at all? Yes. Sure. Okay. But these events are a great way to dispel negative stereotypes and that used safely and appropriately, people of all ages can enjoy shooting sports. What's your, what's your opinion going into the shooting range right now? Much more comfortable, uh, but a little apprehensive. I have no idea what to expect. That's how I would try it. Hey, good? Uh, okay. All right. Uh, a little nervous bit. and excited. Nervous yeah, excited? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a couple things that we have to go through really quick. We go through the range rules. Um, we'll just run through these really quick and then I'll go through some of the some stuff on actual shooting and pistol and, and handling the firearm. And then we'll get you guys on the firing line and keep you shooting. So is everybody excited? Uh, my name is Murray Robertson. This is my daughter, Avery. I've been shooting for about five years and I've introduced Avery to the handgun sport just this past winter. I, I find like when I first started shooting for women on the range, it, sometimes it can get a little intimidating or uncomfortable. Uh, but for here, we have it set up so that you know women can just you know not have to maybe sometimes feel that intimidation. Shooters of all skill levels, both young and old, come to these events to take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one instruction and the fun environment. Today already we've had a lot of women who want to come back on our ladies' night, and that's that's exactly what we do this for, so that women can be here. So. <laughs> Of course, the main goal is to shoot the guns, and every participant got to shoot 50 rounds between two handguns. Being a mom, I have kids and, and they come to the gun range with me and you know, you're know you in a conversation with other women and they go, oh, you shoot guns. So then it's an education portion for me. So I love educating uh, other people and you get to educate them on you know firearm safety, the rules and regulations, what it takes to actually own a firearm within Canada. We have Don. Brandon, Tyler, and Lisa. There's four ROs, and myself. So we're all here to help. Um, we want to make it fun. I want, I want y'all to have fun because I want everybody to come back. All in all, the feedback from the participants was very encouraging, with many of the first-time shooters expressing interest in doing it all over again. How was that? Fantastic. It was a lot of fun. It was a blast. It was good. Yeah. Instructors were pretty good. I would say easier. Easier than I thought. How much you do the first shot, it, it Makes yeah. you a lot more comfortable. Gotta remember to breathe though. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With Yolanda as the instructor and the exciting time had by all, people will be coming back for more. being completely safe and being a safe atmosphere for them to be teaching the safety. 
you know, the basic safety. I mean, we only have an hour for each lady, so it's kind of tough to go through everything. Do you guys jerk off the floor? So if the 22 has hardly any recoil okay, at all, okay. it'll be nice, you know what I mean? Like you get a little bit of recoil together. Okay, I bet you. Are you good over there? Yeah. The key components are safety, education, and fun, and, and that's what we drive for in our days when, when, they, when we host ladies' events. So. If you want to get involved in the DSS BCA, check them out at www.dssmatch.com. For more information about attending shooting events at the CFGPA, check out their website at chilliwackfishinggame.com. For more information on Exile Reloaded, follow their Facebook page at facebook.com slash exile reloaded. And finally, to protect your rights to own and use firearms, support the CCFR by going to www.firearmrights.ca. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.